Well, I think one of the things that I always do with my films is I create a sizzle reel or a trailer which will help tell the story to others, tell the story that I intend to tell, and tell it how I intend to tell it. Because every documentary filmmaker is different. And ideally, you're going to have a certain way of telling your story. There's going to be a style, or I hate to use the word vision, but I can't think of a better one right now, for the way you plan to tell your story. And so your, your trailer or your sizzle reel is really important in terms of bringing in money for your film. And until you have that, it's very expensive to go to these archives and start to develop any kind of archival bank. Um, I suggest when you begin to go to the most obvious places for your sizzle reel. Go to YouTube, you know, go to places that go to, you know, if you're at a university and there's an archive at the university and they allow you to borrow the footage. You're not licensing it yet, you're just using it. You can use it with timestamps in it and, and uh, watermarks. It's not, going to offend, it's not going to offend anybody to see a watermark. There are places, ABC has an archive house, CBS, all the, all the networks have them. Um, most, most university libraries have archival houses. Can I just jump in on sure. that? Um, the, uh, we discovered this summer a, a page in um, the BOPS library um, website that is uh, devoted to documentary resources. The librarian Pamela Bloom has put together a list of archival sources. And some of them are free and some of them cost. But it's a very uh, effective, very uh, comprehensive list. And it's just there for the taking. And there are free resources, like the Brooklyn Historical Society has a lot of online resources for New York City and Brooklyn. Um, that the Prelinger um, archives is one of yeah. the most valuable resources, and those are very much um, pay by donation, I believe. I'd also like to point out something Nancy said that during an interview, someone mentions something or a conversation, and that not only do people sometimes mention it, but people who are eyewitnesses, you can say, do you remember if anybody was filming that day or if anyone had a camera? No question. And, and as a matter of fact, you should never leave an interview without getting the next door open. You know, um, not only might they remember that there was a camera around, but they may also have home, home movies. Um, and there's nothing better than something intimate and, and, and personal for a documentary than home movies. You can do so much with them, and you'll see our use of them in a couple of films. Um, so I think that, you know, archival footage can come up in the, in the most unusual places.